All right. So today we're going to be starting on our uh, new chapter, okay, which is called Heat. Okay, this is chapter four in your physics syllabus. And uh, in the physics syllabus, uh, heat, nah, actually, heat, lah, heat is a very important uh, thing to talk about. Uh, if, we, if we think about all the branches of physics, nah, uh, you will notice nah, that all the branches of physics nah, talk about uh, all forms of energy. Okay, uh, so uh, in the past, you have learned about kinetic energy and potential energy. And now we're going into this uh, heat energy. Okay, and then by and by, uh, as you learn, you, we will also be talking about light energy and then electrical energy. And then, of course, lastly, is uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear energy. Lah. Okay, so we, now we are focusing our attention now into another form of energy, which is called heat. Okay, and when we think about heat, nah, uh, there's a very important concept that we need to remember. Lah. Okay, is that nah, we can actually, okay, we can, uh, there is, there is such thing uh, as heat. Okay, there is such thing uh, as hot. You know? But there is no such thing. Uh, how do I say? Uh, there's no such thing as cold. <laughs> I don't know whether this makes sense or not. Uh. Like, okay, like you can make something become hot. Okay, you, uh, yeah, you can create heat, you know, or, or you can generate heat. Uh, but you cannot generate coal. Think about it. Okay, you cannot generate a coal, this one. Okay, basically, how how cool how coolness ah okay kesejukan itu kesejukan itu adalah disebabkan kamu tidak ada haba okay the coolness ah okay coolness is actually referring to the loss of heat when there is no heat then there is cold so you can actually ah kamu sebenarnya boleh ciptakan I'm using this word ciptakan or create ah very loosely lah okay you can actually create or generate heat kamu boleh menjana haba Okay, and the easiest way to jana haba usually is by friction lah. Kalau kamu geserkan dua tangan lah. Okay, if you, if you rub your hands together, then you can create heat. Okay, but when you stop rubbing your hands together, what you're, letting, what you're doing is actually you're stopping, you're just not generating heat. When you're not generating heat, then things become cold. But you cannot actually generate cold. You think about it. Kau tidak boleh menghasilkan sejuk. It's just kamu keluarkan yang panas daripada satu benda yang panas, then dia akan menjadi sejuk. But you cannot actually create, you, what can you do uh, to create uh, coal? You can't. Okay, you put water in the fridge, uh, oh, sorry, you put water in the freezer. Okay, and then, uh, um, and then the, the, the water becomes ice. Lah. And the water becomes ice precisely because you're taking out the heat from it. Kamu mengeluarkan haba daripada itu. That's, that's the only thing you can do. But you cannot create coal. Okay, I challenge you like, to think of a way uh, that you create coal, but you can't. Okay, in physics, uh, there is no such thing uh, as creating the feeling of coal. It is either you tambah haba atau you keluarkan haba. That's it. And both involves the concept of heat. You either add heat or you take away heat. Okay, you don't actually add hot and then you add coal. No, you can't. Okay, by adding ice into water, okay, you're just taking out the heat from the water into the ice. Okay, but that one we'll talk about in a while. Okay, so this is a very important thing uh, that we need to understand first now uh, whenever we talk about heat. Okay, is that you're actually just playing with heat. Okay, you're not playing with uh, anything that is cold. Uh. Okay, so these notes here that I'm sharing, uh, I will share with you uh, maybe towards the end of the chapter. Okay, but uh, for now, just refer to your textbook and then uh, all these notes here are just like very cute in this one. Lah. Okay, I want to give a small shout out to this teacher called Alina Ayman Arif. Okay, she did this set of notes which is super cool. Okay, and I really like the illustrations that she used because it does help uh, in our explanation. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about uh, when, we, when we talk about heat nah, is we need to understand the difference between heat and temperature. Okay. Heat is dalam bahasa Melayu uh, is haba and temperature is suhu. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu lah. Okay, so heat is a form of energy. Okay, it's a form of energy, but temperature is the degree of hotness in a body. Darjah kepanasan dalam satu jasad. Okay, so it's different thing altogether. Uh. Temperature you can measure. Oh, actually, sorry, both you can measure lah. Okay, but it's measuring different things. Heat is a form of energy. Satu bentuk tenaga. 
Okay, temperature is the degree of hotness in the body. Suhu lah. Okay, darjah kepanasan suhu. Oh, sorry, yeah, darjah kepanasan dalam satu jasad. Okay, atau dalam satu badan. The unit for heat, as with all forms of energy, is joule. Okay, manakala the unit for temperature. Okay, this is the SI unit, lah, which is Kelvin. But we are very used to degree Celsius. This is very normal. Okay, but in physics, lah, especially in this chapter, lah. Okay, when we talk about temperature in this chapter, we want to talk about this unit which is called Kelvin. Okay, and later you will learn uh, how to change from degree Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, uh, does any one of you know what is the what is another unit for temperature that the world uses besides degree Celsius? Does anybody know what is the other? You know, you can type out your answers in the, the, the chat. Does anybody know? What is the other, this one? So let's see. Okay, yeah, so most of you, either personally or uh, to everyone, okay, Fahrenheit. Uh. So degrees Fahrenheit is a, is a unit that is used in, especially like in America. Like America, they like to use uh, Fahrenheit. Certain countries also use Fahrenheit. Okay, but uh, for us in Malaysia, we usually use degrees Celsius. But in physics specifically, yeah, okay, um, we use this unit called Kelvin uh, for temperature. Okay, let me ask you, uh, uh, do you know how to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit? Tell me, on a plus how many or times how many or divide by how many? How do you change degree Celsius to Fahrenheit? What is the, let's say for example, uh, 37 degrees Celsius. Besides Googling it, lah, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know, you can just type Google. Lah, 30, you know when I was baking, uh, I mean, when I bake, uh, usually I have to convert from Fahrenheit to degree Celsius because a lot of a lot of recipes they ask for Fahrenheit. But I don't know it's this one. But does anybody know what is the conversion rate for um, Fahrenheit or Celsius to Fahrenheit? Lah? Let's say for example, thirty seven thirty six degrees Celsius. Okay, to Fahrenheit. Thirty six degrees Celsius is the you know normal this one. Lah. Multiply by 2 and add 30. Using a scientific calculator, hello. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be. I don't know. Uh, according to this, according to Google, uh, there, there is, there is, there is a design. Okay, uh, according to Google, it says times 9 over 5 plus 32. I don't know, but actually, yeah, actually the Zulaika's answer seems to make sense. Multiply by 2 and add 30, okay? Um, yeah, there is a this one. Lah. So according to Google, okay, which I just checked, it is times 9 over 5 plus 32. Okay, I'm not sure whether they, whether, I don't, I don't know this one. Lah. Okay, so for example, lah, 36 degrees Celsius, which is the standard human temperature, is the, it is the, it is the temperature that you keep hearing nowadays. Lah. Kalau kau mau masuk kedai kan, make sure your body is no more than 36 point something, or 36 point 7, or 37 lah. Okay, jangan sejak 38. Because 38 is like, okay, tak boleh masuk kedai. Okay, so 36 degrees Celsius is about 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is a conversion rate lah. Okay, and later you will learn how to change from degrees Celsius to Kelvin and the other way around. Okay, and there's a scientific explanation behind this. Okay, heat is a derived quantity, okay, because this one, but temperature is a basic quantity because it is an S, uh, it is the one of the seven, sorry, it is one of the seven basic quantities that you learn, base quantities uh, that you learn uh, much, much earlier on uh, in chapter one. Okay, uh, and how we measure instrument is this instrument called a joule meter, okay, whereas in temperature, we use a standard one, a thermometer. Whether it is the one that you stick in the mouth or stick under your armpit, you know, or whether it's the infrared one that now is very popular. Okay, so all those are thermometers, just different ways of uh, different way, different ways on measuring uh, temperature. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand uh, is the difference between heat and temperature. Okay, heat uh, is something that flows. Okay, so like you know, energy like energy, you know, flows. Of course, I'm not talking about, you know, like, okay, positive energy. This is not yoga, la, okay? But, you know, heat is something that flows. Okay, heat uh, always flows. Okay, always flows. The thing that we need to understand uh, is heat always flows 
from something that is of high temperature to low temperature. Okay, uh, generally that's how we understand it. But we need to understand that heat is something that flows. Temperature is something that we measure. Okay, temperature is we want to know how much uh, the degree of hotness in the body. La. Okay, so when we understand this difference, uh, then we have to be careful. No? We cannot just simply say, uh, we cannot just simply throw these two words around because they mean totally different things. Okay, so one of the first things that we need to understand when we talk about heat is the difference uh, between heat and temperature. Sorry, heat and temperature. Okay, it must be different. Okay, and we cannot use the, the words uh, so interchangeably. Okay, because it means to two totally different things. All right. Next section. Uh, okay, so whenever, since I'm talking about uh, heat flowing, uh, we need to understand this next concept, which is called thermal equilibrium. Okay, so uh, a very standard, uh, uh, a very standard situation uh, is, uh, you know, whenever you put hot milk, sorry, to bring up, okay, whenever you put up cold milk uh, inside a bottle of hot water, <sighs> sorry, whenever you put cold milk inside a bowl of hot water, okay, what is going to happen to the milk? Okay, very naturally, the milk will slowly heat up. And why does the milk slowly heat up? Because the heat from the hot water is going to flow in into the cold milk. Okay, until, uh, okay, until uh, it reaches this condition uh, called thermal equilibrium. Okay, so thermal equilibrium, okay, dalam bahasa Melayu is keseimbangan thermal. Okay, we use the word thermal uh, because thermal refers to heat. Okay, so thermal equilibrium is a condition where two objects in contact. Okay, that means dual object yang bersentuhan. Uh, okay, they may not be touching like this. Okay, they can be, this is a situation where they're in contact. Okay, the cold milk is touching the, the hot water. Okay, the wet towel is touching the face of the orang yang ada fever. Okay, the spoon and then you know when you put a spoon inside a hot water or this one then the spoon itself will become hot right at first the spoon is cold tapi bila kau kasih masukkan di dalam air panas bahkan dia akan jadi panas so <coughs> so when you have two objects in contact okay what is going to happen is they are going to finally reach uh, the same temperature and the net flow of heat is zero i'm going to come to this in a while uh, but i want you to understand this thing when thermal equilibrium happens, bila berlakunya keseimbangan thermal, two things must happen. Number one, both of them will reach the same temperature. So at first, they are of different temperatures. Okay, take the example of the cold milk. Oh, sorry. Take the example of the cold milk and the hot water. Okay, cold milk, low temperature. Hot water is high temperature. Okay, but when thermal equilibrium happens, uh, both of these two, the cold milk and the hot water, will reach the same temperature. Which means the cold milk won't be cold anymore and the hot water won't be that hot anymore. Lah, okay, because they will reach the same temperature. Okay, and it is not necessarily in the middle. Lah. Dia bukan, kalau the cold milk lah, is 10 degrees Celsius and the hot water is 90 degrees Celsius. Lah. So 10 plus 90 divided by 2. Dia bukan macam 2. Lah. Okay, there is, a, there is a way to calculate this but we're not going to talk about this now. Lah. Okay, but we know that they will reach the same temperature. Okay, but what the temperature is, is something that we will learn in the second subtopic. Okay, the second thing that we need to understand is the word net flow of heat. Okay, net flow of heat, uh, okay, which uh, I will come to in a while. So these are examples of situations okay, where thermal equilibrium happens. Okay, when you put a wet towel on the forehead of a fever patient, this is a very standard thing that all mothers do. Okay, but, and it makes sense because when you have a fever, your body is very hot. Okay, and body is very hot is not very good actually for you. Lah. So you want to bring your body temperature down. And one of the ways you bring your body temperature down, okay, besides turning the aircon on, okay, uh, is to put a wet towel on your forehead. Okay, because what happens, the wet towel is cold, okay, your body is hot. So the heat from your body uh, will go into the wet towel. So lama kelamaan kan, what happens to the wet towel? Okay, lama kelamaan, the wet towel will become hot. 
or it will become hotter. Like, it won't be as cold as it was in the beginning. Okay. Another situation where we can apply thermal equilibrium is when we measure body temperature. Okay, this one we will come to in a while because this is one of the main things that we need to talk about in thermal equilibrium. Okay, so let's talk about how thermal equilibrium occurs. Okay, explain how thermal equilibrium occurs. Yeah, sorry, this is how you read this. Huh? Not explain thermal occur how equilibrium. So weird. Okay, explain how thermal equilibrium occurs. Okay, sorry, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to all the people that, uh, that were late. Hi, Lester. Good morning. Okay. And yeah, whoever. Okay. So somebody just asked me, yeah, sir, when we have a hot fever, can cold water make our body temperature go down? Uh, yes, can. You know, when we have a, but we're not recommended to do that, lah, because like. Like no, like okay. If you have hot, if you have fever, okay, nobody is gonna ask you to go out into the rain and you know, okay, biarlah hujan yang sejuk ini membasahi pipi ku. It's not that case lah, okay. But yes, cold water. That's why uh, when we have hot fever, when we have fever, okay, the general the general practice uh, is to is to take you know a, a towel with cold water right? and then we dab ourselves, dab ourselves because the idea is there lah. Because we want to take out the heat from our body. When we take out the heat from our body, you know, we need something that is cold uh, so that, okay, so that this can happen. So that heat can flow out. Okay, so when we want to explain how thermal equilibrium occurs, okay, there are these four points that we must remember. Okay, so point number one. When two objects in, are in thermal contact, Okay, point number one. Uh, two objects must be in thermal contact. They must be touching. Okay. Uh, in general, uh, okay, in general, uh, we assume that heat cannot flow okay, if the two objects are not touching. Okay. If the two objects are not touching. Of course, you know, okay, for example, uh, this bottle of what is this? Okay, this bottle of hand lotion and uh, okay, and my handphone. Okay, this bottle of hand lotion and my handphone. So, if they are not touching, then we say that they are not in thermal contact. Okay, although in reality, the, the lotion is touching the air and the air is touching the handphone now. Okay, but fine, let's not talk about this. But this is two objects in thermal contact. Okay, in thermal contact means they are both touching one another. Okay, and when they are both touching one another, okay, what happens is heat will flow. Okay, heat will flow from the, the object with the higher temperature to the lower temperature. Okay, but uh, I want you to add, okay, Angeline, you raise your hand. Do you have a question for me? Sorry, Angeline raised her hand, so. Are you pressing and now? Huh, sorry? Uh, accidentally pressed. Oh, okay, fine. All right, so, uh, so two objects uh, when they are in thermal contact, okay, what will happen is heat will flow uh, from the object with higher temperature to the lower temperature. But I also need to mention uh, that uh, there is a higher heat transfer from the object from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. Okay, Jericho, raise your hand. Do you have a question? Oh, this one also is tertekan. <laughs> Okay, there are a lot of very itchy hands these days. Okay, so, uh, but, okay, but uh, the thing that we also need to understand is that there is a little bit of heat energy uh, that is transferred from the cold object to the hot object. Okay, cuma bila kita, bila kita kasih tolak, uh, you think of this uh, as, you know, like, like, you know, when we talk about forces, lah. okay, the bigger force minus the smaller force, so there's a net force. Okay, so in this way, we talk about this net flow of heat. There is a flow of heat from the hot object to the cold object. But there is also a flow of heat uh, from the cold object to the hot object. Okay, but since this cold object uh, has, very, has much less heat, uh, so the transfer of energy 
okay, at the beginning, uh, the transfer of energy from the cold object to the hot object is much smaller. Okay, kalau dibandingkan dari, daripada yang besar kepada yang, sorry, daripada yang panas kepada yang sejukkan, dia punya pemindahan haba lebih banyak. Okay, the cold object to the hot object, ada pemindahan haba. There is a flow of heat energy, but it is small. Okay, compared to the one from hot to cold. Okay, but that, but because of that, nah, there is going to be a net flow of heat that is not zero because ini lebih besar pindah kepada sini bahkan. So let's say for example lah, the 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 heat energy that is transferred from the hot to cold is 100 joule. Okay, a big one lah. But from the cold to the hot nah, is only 10 joules. Okay, so from the hot to cold transfer 100 joules. At, at the same time, from the cold to the hot only transfer. Sorry, did I say 10 joules this time? Hot to cold transfer 100 joules. Cold to hot transfer 10 joules. So how much is the net flow of heat? The net flow of heat is 100 minus 10. Or 100 plus negative 10. So it's 90 joules. And that's the net flow of heat. Okay? And what is going to happen is that this heat energy is going to be transferred antara kedua dua. Okay? So it's going to be transferred from hot to cold and cold to hot. And by and by, uh, what will happen is the heat energy from the hot one, okay, dia akan makin lama makin berkurangan dan heat energy from the cold one, okay, is makin lama makin bertambah. Until we reach this situation where the net flow of heat is zero. Okay, I transfer 60 joules over, the cold one also transfers 60 joules over. Okay, when that happens, we say that the net flow of heat is zero. Okay, because doesn't mean that there's no net flow of heat. Nah. This is another thing that we need to understand. Okay, when net flow of heat is zero, it just simply means that I, I transfer my heat to you same as you transfer your heat to me. Okay, because we have achieved the same temperature. Okay, so think of this. Nah. They're like satu daching. Lah. Okay, they, they, it's like a balance beam like that. Okay, at first, okay, there's an imbalance. And then lama 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 kan they balance, okay? But they are still transferring heat to one another because whenever two objects uh, are touching one another, sure got transfer of heat one, okay? Because heat must flow, heat must flow from something that is, you know, hotter to something that is colder, okay? And because of that, to maintain the balance, uh, two objects they must continually flow heat from one person to another. So it doesn't matter lah. Okay, this is hot, this is cold. Okay, so when they touch, when they are in thermal contact, uh, okay, this one will transfer over to here, banyak. This one will transfer over to here, sikit. But lama-lama, this one, dia punya pemindahan akan berkurangan, this one, dia punya pemindahan akan bertambah. Sehinggalah satu ketika, di mana yang ini pindah pergi sini, dan yang ini pindah pergi sini, pada kadar yang sama, at the same rate. And this situation we say is the net flow of heat is zero. When the net flow of heat is zero, both of these two have the same temperature. And we call this situation thermal equilibrium. Okay, keseimbangan thermal. Okay, so an example of this, uh, okay, let's talk about this. Uh. This is a very standard example. So the diagram shows a cup with a hot coffee with a metal spoon. This is very standard. Okay. In the past, uh, when we were learning science since standard one, okay, uh, every, this is a very standard. The standard question is, they will ask you, what will happen to the metal spoon? Everybody can answer this. Okay, the metal spoon, lama-lama, they akan jadi panas. <coughs> okay, sorry, I'll wait. Uh. Wow, ngam-ngam kamu minum hot tea. <laughs> okay, so think about it lah. Lama-lama, the metal spoon will become panas and the hot coffee won't become so hot anymore. Okay, so let's, so that is when you were studying this uh, in you know, lower secondary and primary school, uh, that's as much as you know. Now in Physics 4.4, we're going to explain why this happens. And this happens because of this concept called thermal equilibrium. So when the hot coffee and metal spoon are in contact with each other, okay, the energy is transferred from the hot coffee to the metal spoon and also from the metal spoon to the hot coffee. Okay, but tell me, uh, who transfers more heat at the beginning? 
Okay. The hot coffee, lah, obviously, because the hot coffee has more heat. Okay, so hot coffee transfers energy more okay, to the metal spoon, but the metal spoon also transfers energy to the hot coffee, but stick it. Okay, why? Because they are in thermal contact. Okay, so all these keywords are really similar. thermal contact, energy transfer. Okay, very important. After a short while, okay, the temperature of the metal spoon will be the same as the temperature of the hot coffee. Okay, and this happens because the net flow of heat is zero joules. Okay, and why is the net flow of heat zero joules? Bukan bermaksud tiada sudah peminahan haba. Okay, don't be, don't be mistaken. There is always going to be a transfer of heat. Selagi mereka masih bersentuhan. As long as they are in thermal contact, heat must flow. But in thermal equilibrium, the net flow of heat is zero because Hot coffee transfer to metal spoon, same amount of energy as metal spoon transfer to hot coffee. Okay, and that happens when the temperature is the same. So net flow of heat is zero and the physics concept uh, that is involved here is called thermal equilibrium. Okay, same thing that happens when we check temperature of a patient's body. Next time when you go to a doctor, okay, and if you use the standard thermometer, not the digital one, the, the one that you chuchuk dalam mulut or you know you put under your armpit or you know other places. Okay, so the diagram shows a thermometer clinic, okay, a clinic thermometer that is used by a doctor to this one. So explain how a doctor can check her temperature. So this one is by using the concept of thermal equilibrium. So when you put a thermometer under the tongue, okay, so the thermometer and the tongue are touching. So we say that they're in thermal contact. So there's going to be a heat energy transfer from the body of the patient or from the person's body okay, to the thermometer and from the thermometer to the patient. Okay? And what will happen is, uh, of course, because saya punya badan lebih panas daripada thermometer, so there's going to be more energy flow from me, from the body of the patient to the thermometer. Lah. Okay, and what happens is the thermometer will start rising. Okay, uh, if you know, I mean, I'm sure you know this, uh, but the cecair di dalam thermometer is mercury. Okay, so when mercury receives the heat, uh, it's going to expand and it's going to night, 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 night. Sehingga lah satu ketika, <clears throat> di mana, uh, you know, the energy transfer from my body to the thermometer and from the thermometer to me is the same. When and when that happens, that one is the net flow of heat is zero. When the net flow of heat is zero, the temperature of the thermometer is equal to the temperature of the patient's body. Okay, so you know there are many ways. Uh, <clears throat> there are there are many things now. Okay, there actually there are many examples besides these two lah. Okay, so far there are these two examples. Okay, on how thermal, on how thermal equilibrium is reached. Okay, and in a while, uh, we're going to be talking about how a thermometer works because one of the applications of thermal equilibrium, one of the important applications uh, is a thermometer. Okay, how a thermometer works and how we use it to measure uh, you know, the, degree of, the degree of hotness or the temperature uh, of our body, the temperature of our surroundings. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, so this first thing, uh, okay, that I want you to kuasai, okay, is to 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 explain, uh, okay, to explain how thermal equilibrium is reached. Okay, I want to share with you uh, your textbook, uh, So okay, so in your textbook, uh, are you guys seeing the textbook? Seeing the textbook, uh? Okay, so in your textbook, uh, okay, uh, okay, all this is explained, but there are four examples over here, okay, on how thermal equilibrium is reached in daily life. Okay, so, uh, so for example, uh, in this case, when you want to heat an object, when you make things become hotter, so the hot air in the oven is in thermal contact with the cake batter, okay, the adunan cake. Lah. So heat will flow from the hot air to the cake batter and menyebabkan the cake batter become panas. Okay, cake batter will become panas, 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 panas until it is baked. Lah. Okay, another one is clinical thermometer. This one we just 
discussed just now, clinical thermometer is placed under the tongue of a patient. Heat will flow from the patient's body to the thermometer. But also remember, since the thermometer and the person is touching, there is some heat lah, okay, flowing from the thermometer to the patient's body until the situation where the temperature are both the same. So that means when the temperature are the same, the net flow of heat is zero. Okay, the body of the temperature, sorry, the body temperature of the patient can be determined because thermal equilibrium occurs. Okay, you will notice that after a while, uh, the, the, the mercury stops rising. Okay, then you know, okay, thermal equilibrium sudah dicapai and you can measure the temperature of the patient. Okay, for example, cooling an object, uh, okay, when kita mau kasih keluarkan haba. So when food is kept in a refrigerator, heat from the food flows to the air in the refrigerator until thermal equilibrium occurs. So the temperature of the food drops and the food stays fresh for a longer period. A very standard example of thermal equilibrium is when we do this, lah, okay, ice. When we add ice into water, think about it, ice is cold and the water is hot. Lah. Okay, hot lah, in comparison. Okay, so there's going to, and they are in thermal contact. Thermal contact means they are going to be changing energy, heat energy with one another. So heat energy from the hot water, okay, or the hotter drink lah, is going to flow into the ice cube. And some heat energy yeah, from the ice cube is going to flow into the hot water. Okay, sorry, not hot water, into the drink lah. Okay, so ice cubes will absorb the heat from the drink and melt. So melted ice cubes absorb heat from the drink until thermal equilibrium is achieved. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the reason why ice cubes melt uh, is because they receive the heat from, the, what drink is this? From this syrup lah. Okay, this syrup originally is not that hot, but it's hotter than the ice. Okay, ice is zero degrees Celsius. So, when you put ice into water, because of the difference in temperature, you know that the, this uh, syrup uh, has more heat. So, the heat from the syrup is going to flow into the ice. Okay, the ice is going to terima the heat, and when ice receives heat, it's going to melt. Okay, until a situation where the heat energy from the drink to the ice is the same as the heat energy from the ice to the drink. Okay, and we call this situation net rate, net heat flow is zero. Okay, when net heat flow is zero, temperature is the same, thermal equilibrium is achieved. Okay, so think of it in that sense, uh, this three point, sorry, three point this one. Uh, okay, the, the, the three point, uh, the three main points that uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about thermal equilibrium, okay, net flow of heat is zero, temperature is the same, thermal equilibrium is reached. Okay, so uh, when you explain thermal equilibrium, please make sure that uh, you explain it in this way, okay, because it is a very important uh, thing to understand. Okay, uh, any questions so far before I continue? If there are any questions, it's a good time to ask now because, uh, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, la. hold on, uh, I'm... okay, so, uh, so let's continue uh, to talk about how a thermometer works because one of the examples of applications of thermal equilibrium is uh, the thermometer, <clears throat> okay, so. When you put a thermometer inside a, inside a hot water, lah, okay, the thermometer is at first is cooler. Okay, then the hot water, uh, the, the hot water is hotter. Lah. So obviously there's going to be heat transfer from the hot water into the thermometer. Is there heat transfer from the thermometer to the hot water? Yes, but it is so small compared to the heat flowing from the hot water to the thermometer. Okay, so point number one, when the thermometer is inserted in hot water, they are going to be in thermal contact. Heat will flow from the hot water to the thermometer. Um, there is a heat transfer, but actually there is also a transfer from the thermometer to the hot water. Until the net flow of heat is zero. Because lama kelamaan, okay, lama kelamaan, the heat transfer from the hot water is going to go less and less and less and the heat transfer from the thermometer to the hot water is going to go more and more and more. 
okay, until the net flow of heat is zero. When that happens, the temperature of the thermometer will be the same as the temperature of the hot water. Then you can say, oh, okay, the temperature of the hot water is 67.4 degrees Celsius. Something. Okay, and that's how we use a thermometer. So one of the most famous uh, thermometers that we use, okay, especially in the physics lab, uh, is this thermometer, which is called a liquid in glass thermometer. Okay, liquid in glass, uh, because the liquid that is in the thermometer, okay, it is this liquid called mercury. Okay, mercury, the, the chemical symbol for mercury is Hg. Okay, so one, the most important thing, uh, okay, the most important thing about mercury is that mercury expands uniformly when it is heated. And this is a very important thing. That's why in thermometers, uh, we don't put oil, we don't put ribena, we don't put uh, you know, other liquids. Uh, we usually put mercury. Okay? As, as far as you may probably know, uh, okay, we, the, we have, uh, let me see, I think you probably have been exposed to two different kinds of liquid in glass thermometer. One is mercury. <coughs> okay, mercury, yang dia punya warna adalah macam perak-perak sikit lah. Like silverish color. Okay, another one is the kind of thermometer that you can buy from the souvenir shop. The one where the water inside is red color one. Okay, I think I have one. I used to have one thermometer like that lah. Okay, the, the liquid inside now is thermometer. Now, those kind of thermometers, are usually what we call alcohol thermometers. Okay, it is red color because it is coloring lah. Okay, alcohol is actually colorless. Okay, the warna to alcohol, but obviously you don't want a colorless liquid inside a the thermometer because you can't read it. So that's why they put a little bit of coloring, red color, so that you know you can take the reading of the thermometer lah. Okay, but usually the liquid inside there is alcohol because you know when you compare alcohol and mercury, alcohol is safer lah. Okay, safer, okay, it's not safe, it's just safer than mercury. Because mercury is very poisonous to humans. Okay, if we get mercury inside our body, yeah, or if mercury tercampur dengan kita punya darah, we can die. Okay, so, uh, which is why mercury thermometers are very specific. Lah. We use it only in hospitals, in labs, you know, in clinics. Okay, you cannot just simply, simply go and buy a mercury thermometer. But alcohol thermometer, alcohol is fine. Lah. Okay, so they can sell it in uh, souvenir shops. Okay, but I don't want to talk about alcohol, I'll talk about mercury. Lah. So mercury thermometer, a very interesting characteristic of mercury is that it expands uniformly when heated. When you heat up mercury, yeah, it will expand secara serat, sekata. Okay, dia akan mengembang secara sekata. It won't like over here mengembang, baru sini mengembang. No, it's very nice. Okay, very nicely expands uh, when heating. Okay, second is opaque. Uh. Opaque is, um, I can't remember what it is in Malay, but it means it does not allow light to pass through. Okay, which means that when you hold up the thermometer and you see mercury over there, you can actually see it. Lah. Okay, berbanding dengan kalau cecair, uh, like water is not opaque. Okay, because you can see through water. But mercury is opaque because, you know, light doesn't pass through. Second, uh, thirdly, it is a good conductor of heat. Okay, fourthly, it has a high boiling point, 357 degrees Celsius, which means that you can generally use it safely for, for uh, humans. Lah. Okay, and it has a low frozen point. Low frozen point means uh, it doesn't freeze up, they tidak akan membeku, uh, okay, unless you reach negative 38 degrees Celsius, which is kind of impossible for humans. Lah. Okay, humans lowest as well is about 30 something, not negative 30 something. Okay, so all these characteristics of mercury make it very good nah, okay, to be the liquid inside the liquid in glass thermometers. Okay, so uh, things to remember. Lah. Why do we use mercury inside liquid in glass thermometer? Okay, but <coughs> um, this... Oh, sorry, do I... Okay, sorry. Before I continue, lah, so liquid in glass thermometer is very useful for like example, in normal situations, when you want to measure, uh, you know, normal temperatures. But if you want to measure, let's say if you go to the North Pole, 
Or pergi ke kutub utara atau kutub selatan kan. So the temperature there is like very extreme. Okay, extremely cold. Okay, so uh, in those cases, uh, and if you want to measure the temperature of there, you cannot use mercury thermometer because the temperature in the Antarctica or the Arctic, uh, okay, is definitely much lower than negative 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're talking about the negative, you know, 60s, 70s. Uh. Okay, so in those situations, uh, we use an alcohol thermometer and not a mercury thermometer. Because the freezing point of alcohol is much lower than the freezing point of uh, mercury. Okay, just uh, some extra information. Lah. Okay, so there are times, uh, other, other situasi di mana lebih baik kita gunakan alcohol thermometer. But generally in our world, in our daily use, okay, we usually use a mercury thermometer. Okay, but whether it is a mercury thermometer, whether it is an alcohol thermometer, all these thermometers dipanggil sebagai liquid in glass. Because the thermometer is glass, inside there is liquid. Okay, so this is what a liquid in glass thermometer generally looks like. Uh, a few things that we need to take note. Lah. Number one, the place where you put your mouth, <coughs> sorry, the place where it touches uh, is called the bulb. Okay, so the bulb, uh, there are two characteristics of the bulb. Number one, it must have a thin glass wall. Okay, the wall of the bulb uh, must be thin. Lah. Okay, so that you know the heat uh, heat transfer to mercury will be faster. Secondly, the the bulb should also be large, but not so large uh, until it you know hurts your mouth. Lah. Okay, like you don't want to stick the, the bulb into your mouth, then ow oh, sakit so about the bulb the lampo besar. So it must be big, and the reason is so that it can increase the rate of expansion of mercury. Okay. Thirdly, is this okay? So this thing in the middle over here, okay, this thing in the middle over here is called the capillary tube. It is where the mercury will flow. So over here is the mercury, yeah? then when they are jadi panas, it will expand. When it expands, it will flow and it will naik, 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 naik. Lah. Okay, so di mana tempat dia naik ini, ini dipanggil sebagai capillary tube. Okay, this thing in the center. The big one that is covering the capillary tube is called the glass tube. Okay, so some characteristics of the capillary tube, but the capillary tube should be narrow, okay, as narrow as possible to increase its sensitivity. Because we want to know, especially now when we're in our COVID age, the difference between 36.6 and 36.7 is very big. Oh, fine. 36.7 and 36.8. Okay, to us, it's like, huh? Point satu saja pun, it's like no difference. Okay, but uh, in the medicine world, uh, a difference of temperature of 0 0.1 uh, is a very important thing. It's very big. Okay, so we have a narrow capillary tube so that we can increase its sensitivity. Okay, increase its sensitivity means the scale will be small or it can detect the small changes in temperature. Okay, a difference of 0 0.1 degrees Celsius is very important. Okay, it makes a world of difference. Okay, for us, it's like, huh, 0.1 Okay, but actually, to the medical world, it's a very big difference. Okay, so, uh, so one of the good things, a good thermometer lah, must have a narrow capillary tube. Okay, so that its sensitivity can increase. We talked about sensitivity in chapter one. Lah. The more sensitive an instrument, okay, it can detect, you know, more decimal places. Okay, and one of the biggest uh, comparisons we did was the difference between the meter rule and the micrometer screw gauge. Meter rule is 0 0.1 cm sensitivity. Micrometer screw gauge is 0 0.02 mm. Okay, uh, sorry, 0 0.01 mm. Okay, so it's micrometer screw gauge is very sensitive. Small changes uh, it can detect. Okay, but the, the <coughs> sorry, the, the meter rule is not so sensitive uh, because only until 0 0.1. Okay, so we want a narrow capillary tube so that the thermometer can be more sensitive. Okay, now the glass tube, okay, the glass tube should be transparent. Obviously, it should be transparent. Okay, imagine uh, if your thermometer is not transparent. You look at the thermometer and you cannot see anything. So it must be transparent so that the level of liquid can be seen easily. But at the same time, it should also be strong so that it is not easy to break. 
Okay, and it should act as a magnifying glass. So, membesarkan apa yang kamu macam. Okay, so all these are very important characteristics of a liquid in glass thermometer. Okay, so say for example, uh, I give you this, I give you this thermometer, but the problem is there is no measurement over there. I just give you a thermometer, you know, I pump the mercury inside, I put inside the burner, I pass on the bulb, you know, I pass on everything. But the thing is, I got no sengatan, I got no, I got no way to read it. Okay, so in order for us to know how to pasang the sengatan, sengatan is the, how to say, sengatan, the measurements lah. Okay, we call this process uh, calibrating a thermometer. How do you calibrate a thermometer? Okay, so we first calibrate the thermometer by putting it in ice. Because we know that ice, uh, in normal situations, ice is how many degrees? Ice is zero degrees Celsius, right? So when we put the thermometer in ice, what is going to happen to the mercury? The mercury akan turun, 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 and then it will finally stop. When it reaches thermal equilibrium with the ice, it will stop. Okay, so the uncalibrated mercury thermometer is placed in a beaker containing ice cubes and water at zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so the length of the mercury column here, okay, bila dia turun sini, tup, we will just mark it as L0. Okay. After we put it in ice, the next step is we put it in hot water. Because we know that hot water is how many degrees Celsius? It's 100 degrees Celsius, right? So what is going to happen to the thermometer? The mercury is going to expand, 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 expand. until it reaches a certain point where thermal equilibrium is reached. Then we know, oh, okay, itu adalah tahap 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so imagine, uh, if, okay, sorry, imagine this is a, uh, this one. Uh. So I put inside, then the mercury turn, 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 sampai zero. So set tanda di sini. Here is zero. Then I put it in hot water. Okay, then the mercury akan naik, 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 until here is 100. Okay, then I mark it here lah. Saya tandakan di sini, sini 100. So I have zero, I have 100. Then I can calibrate already lah. I can divide it into 100 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, all the way until 100. Okay. And that's how you calibrate a thermometer. Okay, put it in ice, mark. Put it in hot water, mark. Okay, because we know this is standard. Huh? Ice is zero degrees Celsius. Steam huh, or hot water, sorry, boiling water. Lah. Okay, it's 100 degrees Celsius. This is, you know, tidak boleh di, dinafikan. Like it's a fact of life. So you have zero, you have 100, then you can just, you know, uh, you, you can calibrate it. Lah. You can mark, 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 mark. So the length of the mercury column, L equals to L theta, when the thermometer is placed in a hot liquid temperature, theta degrees Celsius, you can use, you can calculate, huh? okay, you can calculate the, temp the temperature by using this formula. Okay, the formula is at a certain temperature, the length at a certain temperature minus the length at zero degrees Celsius over the length of 100 degrees Celsius minus the length of zero degrees Celsius. Okay, then you just times by 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the formula that is uh, this one. Okay, uh, in a while uh, later, I will, uh, I will post, yeah, I will post in a Google Classroom. Uh, okay, because actually uh, calibration of liquid and glass thermometer is, kalau saya cakap, 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 cakap saja kan, it's very hard to imagine. Okay, so I will post up a video to show you how the calibration is done. Okay, but, if let's say I want to calculate a certain temperature, lah, okay, I put in the this one, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, I put in the thermometer that is uncalibrated, uh, okay, in a certain uh, in a certain liquid, yang ada certain temperature, and I want to know what is the temperature, I can use this formula. Okay, let's look at this example. Uh. So the length of the mercury column at the ice point, ice point is L0, this one. So the length is 5 centimeters. Okay, steam point, steam point is L100 because steam is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's 40 centimeters respectively. So L0, L0 uh, is 5 centimeters. L100 is 40 centimeters. When the thermometer is immersed in a liquid P, the length of the mercury column is 23.0 centimeters. So this, this new length, okay, this is 23.0 cm. So I want to know, 23 cm bahkan, 
how, how many degrees is it? Okay, how, how much is the temperature over here? So we use this formula to count. What is the temperature in SI unit? Okay, we'll talk about this in a while. Uh, okay, in this class. So uh, we calculate the temperature like this. L theta, which is 23, minus L0, which is 5. Okay, so when you list out the information, you substitute, then you get this one, 51.43 degrees Celsius. But since it is asking for SI unit, okay, and this is where I need to tell you. Remember the first point we said uh, that the SI unit for temperature is not degree Celsius, it is actually Kelvin. So once you have calculated the temperature in degree Celsius, okay, then we need to convert it to Kelvin. Uh, and the conversion to Kelvin is very simple. The temperature in degree Celsius plus 273. Okay, just like just now when I asked you how to change from degree Celsius to Fahrenheit, uh, so some of you say, oh, times 2 plus 30. Some of you, it's 9 over 5 plus 30. So <clears throat> in the same way, we want to change from degree Celsius to Kelvin. We just have to add 273. Why is it at 273? We will learn this much later in the fourth subtopic. Okay, for now, kita terima saja fakta uh, lah. Okay, bahawa mau tukar daripada degree Celsius kepada Kelvin, tambah je 273. Okay, so you will get 324.43 Kelvin. Okay, here's another example. Huh? Okay, so the distance between 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius is 25.0 cm. Okay, when the thermometer is put into a beaker of water, the length of the mercury column is 16 cm, above the lower fixed point. Okay, so since this is the case, we say that L0 is 0 cm, L100 is 25 cm, and L theta is 16 cm. So the temperature of the water is 64 degrees Celsius. After you calculate, calculate this. 16 minus 0 over 25 minus 0 times 100. Okay, you get 64 degrees Celsius. Okay, and if you want to change this to Kelvin, just plus 273. Okay, but since they never asked, we can just leave it in degrees Celsius. Okay, the next question is, what is the length of the mercury column if the temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius. So, ini kita mau tanya, apa nilai L theta? How much is L theta? Okay, so, 30 degrees Celsius uh, minus, is L theta minus 0 over 25 minus 0 times 100. Kamu pindah, 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 then you get L theta is 7.5 cm. Means the length of the mercury will be 7.5 cm and that is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? So to summarize, uh, okay, to summarize, these are the things that uh, you should know from today's class. Number one, the difference between heat and temperature. Number two, how to explain thermal equilibrium. And number three, how to calibrate, sorry, how to, sorry, number three is the characteristics of a liquid in glass thermometer. And number four, how to calibrate a liquid in glass thermometer. Okay, the formula that is involved in the calibration. Okay, so uh, any questions uh, regarding this subtopic? Okay, so I owe you, I owe you one thing. Uh, I owe you a video on how to calibrate a thermometer. Okay, I will look for it and I will post it in the Google Classroom. Okay, so uh, for, for all of you, okay, 24 people today. Uh, so. Okay, I'm going to stop recording.